Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm George and today it's a nice bright sunny day in London and today I'm going to be painting in Battersea Park, southwest London on the Thames and just cycling there now making the most of the blue skies and the good weather and I've done a lot of paintings in Battersea Park but there's always so many different spots to paint so I'm going to go there hopefully paint in a slightly different spot and make the most of the the sunny weather try and perhaps paint some reflections or i guess we'll see when we get there remember please subscribe to my channel and let me take you on a journey to Bastie park just had a nice cycle to Battersea Park and the sun is out not a cloud in the sky actually um, which is quite strange for England I do enjoy painting a few clouds but I also enjoy painting a blue sky so I'm definitely not going to complain And I like this scene behind me, um, I like how the light is hit in this small shelter and also there's a lot of reflections going on in the water and a few different ducks, quite a variety of different ducks and birds so I think this is going to make for a nice composition to paint remember please subscribe to the channel and let's start painting To start the painting I've applied a thin warm wash to the majority of my canvas panel but I've left the very top of the panel as the white of the canvas. And the reason for this is that white section of the canvas is where I'm gonna paint the sky, which is gonna be the very lightest part of the painting. And it is easier to paint light blue paint onto a white surface, as if I were to paint the blue paint on top of this dull brown. As I've only applied the imprimatur recently, the colors will mix slightly and this will darken the blue of the sky and also neutralize the blue a bit and make it a bit grayer when it mixes with the brown. And another nice thing about starting the painting this way is just with one simple layer, I've actually mapped out the majority of the composition. As the white section of the canvas represents the sky and this brown tone that I put down represents the tops of the trees and the general foreground section of the painting which is a darker value than that of the sky. And one way to look at plein air painting is you're basically problem solving. You have a white panel in front of you and then a scene behind it and the white panel in no way represents that scene which you're looking at. And step by step, you have to make that panel or your canvas become ever closer to the scene that you're looking at. And the closer that you get in value and color, the more realistic your painting will become. And then you're also faced with the decisions to change things, perhaps enhance some of the colors, perhaps leave some stuff out, perhaps even change some of the shapes of the trees to make the composition more pleasing. For example, 
I'm keeping the shadows in the trees very unified. So I'm not adding small value changes for the different leaves which exist in those areas of shadow, but rather I'm painting them as one flat value and I'm leaving the details in the lights, the sections of the trees which are capturing light and also the edges of the shadows where the tree turns from being in shadow to then being in light. And by getting these edges and the contours of the areas in light, it makes these shadows read as part of the tree without having to paint all the small leaves and branches within the shadows as our eye optically just fills this in. Nature does have an uncountable amount of intricacies and small details, so there's no way you're going to be able to capture everything. You are going to have to simplify the scene and also think what is going to be the focal point, which areas am I really going to apply a high level of focus and detail to. As when you're painting outdoors, especially in one session, you simply won't have the time to paint everything to a very high level of rendered detail as the light will change and it will probably be dark before you can achieve that. And so in my painting, I've decided to make this hut the focal point of the painting. I positioned it more or less in the middle of the painting and I really like how it is vignetted by these cool greens of the trees and the green that they're reflecting into the water. And everywhere else in the scene is basically either green or blue. Everywhere else in the painting is cool in color temperature. Whereas this hut has some oranges, some reds, which are getting reflected really nicely into the water. And I've also paid particular attention to the reflections that the hut is causing in the water. Here I'm using a round brush, which has a fine point, to paint some light yellows around the perimeter of some of these darker green ripples. I finished painting here in Battersea Park. I hope you enjoyed that video. The GoPro died quite early on, but I did get some camera shots of me working. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Check out my next video, where I go on a search through central London to find the most picturesque cherry blossom tree to paint.